Hey everyone, we are back with another Smart Suite Showcase. I'm your host, Nate Montgomery, and in this series, we share the ways that customers are using our platform. Today's episode is gonna be part one of a two-part series. We're gonna be taking a look at how creative agencies are using Smart Suite to manage their clients, the projects, different workflows that team members are a part of for those projects. And then we're gonna go into how you can show utilization for your team members in a very light fashion. In the next video of this two-part series, I'm gonna dive into the financials behind this solution with regards to tracking time, billable hours, and the revenue from the clients as well. Let's dive right in. Before I jump into the actual solution, I wanna remind you where you can find the solution. First spot is in the description of this video. The second spot is inside of your workspace. You can start with a template, go to our showcase section and find the solution here. Now let's jump into the solution. When I open the solution, we're immediately brought into our project dashboard, and this gives us a great overview of everything happening in this solution relating to projects and clients. At the top, we have a couple comparison widgets. We're able to see how many new requests for projects have come in for this time period being this last year, as well as how many active projects we have going on. You can easily join our marketing status meeting with this link here, and we're able to see the status of all tasks that are being worked on and able to click in to see those different tasks and details about them if you want to as well. We have a few charts which are showing us some information on the quantity of projects for different campaign types. So which industries are we working most with? Looks like financial services is our number one campaign type. We have another chart showing our client count by region. So where are most of our clients? And then next up, we have our total estimated time by project, so we can understand which projects are gonna be most time consuming. If I scroll down, we can link out to websites. We're also able to link to our request form where new requests of a project can be brought in. And we're able to see our active projects in our queue in this embedded grid view as well. I'm gonna jump over to clients now. Where we're able to see all the client related information. It's a light CRM. This can be built into your sales process. We have different status denoting is this a prospect, open or closed. And we can start relating our project information with the client information to get things like how much we have charged this client, which I'm gonna talk about in that next showcase. Behind the scenes of the projects, we're able to see all the projects that we're working on for our clients. There are several different stages that these projects go through. For example, starting off as a request through our request form. Here's an example of where you configure that and you can send it out to team members, not just those using SmartSuite. It'll bring in a record with fields of information filled out from that form, and it can start the workflow that happens for these different projects. Now, as a project moves from different stages, so for example, from new to discovery and to contracts phase, we have automations in the background that are gonna create tasks for us that happen at those different stages. If I move over to tasks, we can see all tasks by project. And we can see records representing tasks for each phase of a project. For this artistry and co project, we have a discovery phase, which encompasses this set of subtasks. We have post-production, which encompasses this set of subtasks, design with this set, et cetera. So as you're moving those projects through the phases, they can create a new record in the tasks, signing the right person with those right subtasks that happen. And the task is where a lot of the work is going to be done. And I wanna highlight the different ways you can look at this information to cater towards your team needs. Let's say one team really likes working out of a Kanban view so they can visualize the work going on and likes to drag things across statuses. Another team might like working out of a grid view where they can see everything assigned to them and more fields of information relating to the work that they're doing. And then finally, maybe for a different set of users. So for example, we're only looking at the video editors in our listing of team members. We might want to see the work assigned to them on a timeline so we can figure out if they have time to take on ad hoc video editing jobs for the different projects that a manager might be working on. We're also able to see the hours they are working directly inside of this timeline view so we can see when they'll actually be able to take on that work. Moving on to our asset library, here's a place to visualize and store all the work that has been outputted from our projects. We're linking back to the project, we're able to capture that project ID so we know which project these assets are a part of, and we're able to link out to an external database if we need to as well. Now the asset library is great because you can visualize all the work you've done for different clients. You can use them as inspiration or even as sales assets for future clients and industries that you've worked with in the past. Next up, we have our team members, which is a listing of all of our team members. We can see whether they're active or inactive, whether they're 
an internal member or a contractor. We have their billable rate, the team and location that they're part of, which projects they've requested based on who has filled out that form and the tasks they have been assigned as well. Now scrolling over to the end of this grid view, we're able to see four more fields which are gonna help track utilization at light level. We have a couple formula fields that are helping us get a sense on how much work has been completed and estimated for this current week at hand. In this first field, we have hours tracked this week. So for all the tasks assigned to a team member, how many hours have actually been tracked? So in this case, Michael has 24 hours tracked. This next formula field is taking a look at all the estimated hours of work for this week in particular. There's an estimated hours field inside of the tasks that is used to estimate how long this task will take. And then we have a third field called hours expected this week. This is how many hours we want to allocate to a team member. And we're able to compare estimated hours of work to how many they're expected to work. So we can see if we're assigning enough work to them. And if that is the case, this at capacity field is going to return yes. This probably means that we don't want to assign Michael Cooper any more work this week because he is expected to hit his capacity and he's already tracking a good amount of time. And we may want to look to Olivia to assign new tasks that come up towards the end of this week. And moving back to our project overview dashboard here, as our team members are spending time on those tasks and completing them, that will be updated in this donut chart on the right. And as we create more tasks for the different projects we're working on, we can visualize that in this chart here. And as a team produces more assets in the library, they're able to share those with new prospects that are potentially hiring them from different regions and from different campaign types, which will be reflected in these two graphs here. And that is going to wrap up this Smart Suite showcase. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about how creative agencies are using Smart Suite. Remember in our next video, we're going to talk about all things financial related to the solution. So make sure to check that video out. If you have any questions or requests for a future showcase, feel free to leave that in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.